question it's going to be double overtime. We've already had one double overtime game this year. I've coached a few double overtimes in my career. I've never gone to triple overtime, and I started thinking maybe this one's destined for a triple overtime. Uh, I just want to regroup the guys and just say, hey, we came here because we want to play basketball, and we love playing basketball, so you get an extra four minutes today. That's not a bad thing, so let's just go out there and play. Uh, we definitely played really hard. There were like times when we had bad plays, and we didn't play how, how I know we can play, but the whole game we played hard. And, I mean, we fought it out and ended up with the rest. So good. Well, you know, uh, Glastonbury is an excellent team, and uh, we battled with them. You know, our guys work hard every day at practice to try to get better. We've got some obviously really talented players that did a good job today. Aiden played unbelievable. You know, Ray Brady, all the seniors, Jacob Richie, Frank Sloan coming off the bench. You know, Jared with a bunch of big rebounds. I mean, just a really good job. Jackson with some good minutes. I mean, it just it was just an awesome job by the whole team. I mean, we definitely we definitely know we can't give up. We know we can always go on runs, and that's how that basketball is a game of runs. So you can always you're never out of it. So. Uh, especially tonight, I know I can get to my spots and score, and my, my teammates are passing the ball a lot and getting looks. So uh, I mean, anything I can do to help the team win, and tonight I will score.
think that our team has obviously had a pretty good regular season. Uh, we finished 19 and one, which was our I think our best school record, and we're also undefeated in our conference. Um, honestly, moving forward, this record doesn't really mean much to us. Uh, so we're looking for ahead to playoffs this week, and as well as the state tournament. I don't really worry about the record, but I worry about is how we play. We grew a lot as a team. We played better defense. We moved the ball better on offense. Um, we came together as a team and we played really well. Our record is excellent, but um, I'm more worried about how we're playing as we go into the playoffs. I think we're playing pretty well. So this Saturday, which is tomorrow, we play Westbrook as uh, first round of the Shorelines. Uh, our goal is pretty much just to not take any team lightly. Um, obviously, we hope to win the Shorelines. And that's what we're looking forward to. We could, we've got good players. I think they worry about Aiden and Brady and Ray and, and Jared. And, um, you know, the guys we got to come off the bench, Ty Dean as well. I mean, I think they worry about our players. We've got some good players. Um, hopefully, they think we defend pretty well and then we move the ball well as a team. But, you know, we got good players. Good players, uh, you get wins when you have good players. I feel pretty confident that we can seal the, seal the win of State's and Trollins this year. Great revenge of the teams that took it from us last year.
We've been through a lot of the team, we played together a long time, we fought through deficits, fought while we were up by 20, all about playing hard. And with so much talent on the team, you know, we got so many people recognized by the shoreline for the talents, we got tight team, we got people off the bench, we got everyone putting in their effort, everyone helping out. Personally speaking, I was not worried, I never played really that, but we're such a talented team, we're such a connected team. To me, there was no doubt. It was our time. Yeah, every single time they scored, we either matched it or even doubled it. Usually, I mean, after the second half, we just came out firing every single play, and they didn't have an answer. We, we kind of controlled like the speed of the tempo of the game, but they were doing it in the first half uh, until we got into the second half. Morgan's a really good shooting team, but every team's gonna go through hot streaks, gonna go through cold spells. First half, they were hitting practically every shot. There's only so much you can do to make a team miss if they're just hitting them in your face. Second half, they cooled down a little bit. We took advantage of that one. <laughs> State championship. Yo, Antonio Star, right now. CIAC is sticking by their decision to cancel all the remaining winter tournament games. This was a very controversial decision yesterday. Absolutely, and all of this happening despite a very large protest. You can see it right there outside of the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference headquarters, which is in Cheshire. CIAC leaders responded to the protest saying this was not an easy decision, but the safety of students was the number one priority. It didn't really feel real, I think, for most of us. It was shock at first, I think. I didn't really react. Uh, I feel like it all happened so fast, it was just kind of hard to wrap our heads around. I don't know, it still doesn't really feel that real to me. It was just hard to see my friends that disappointed in something. We saw the announcement, and like I don't think anyone wanted to believe it. And then it kind of set in that like we were done. I was devastated. I found out I was in physics, and immediately just started crying, and couldn't believe that I had played the last game with my teammates. Uh, I just remember like reading reading a tweet yeah. like in my Chinese class saying like, wow, 20 minutes ago I hear they're just like going into this meeting and then after that we don't have a state tournament. It's hard to get over the fact that there's no state championship, there's no state tournament anymore. I left right away and went to go find Aiden and the rest of the guys just to tell them what a fun ride it's been and how awesome it's been all four years. One of their goals was to come to high school and win a shoreline in a state championship and they were halfway there um, to winning you know, both of those. And um, you know, to have that cut short on them, I just, I just felt bad that their, their last game was already done. When I heard Kasher was crying in his room, like I've never, like I, that's when I understood how big of an impact it had on him. Like when I saw like all the senior boys like literally crying, it just like breaks your heart to see that. So it was a tough day when we found out, and it's been hard for the past couple of days, but I'm starting to get better. I didn't know what to say, what to do, how much I could do. I know, uh, you know, obviously you feel bad for your team, particularly the seniors, um, and particularly this senior class who put so much in. It's also hard, like being a senior, seeing like your fellow yeah. classmates not be able to, especially when they're favored to win, not be able to go. You can't do much better than what we did. Um, you know, finished 22 and one with the Shoreline Championship. The one game we lost, we lost in double overtime in early January. I think it was a great season. I just think the way we play together is the big thing of why we win so many games. They're just so unselfish out there on the court. These guys have been playing together since. Yeah. Second, third grade. They have like a there is nothing. There is nothing stopping their team chemistry. And we had a really good senior group: Aiden, Brady, Ray, Todd, Jackson, Jared. It doesn't matter who's scoring or who's doing the majority of the work. Just the chemistry that they've built yeah. over the past probably the, around like eight years yeah. now. Moving forward, there's a lot to take away more than just basketball. It's kind of a brotherhood more than just a team. A real family environment. Everyone's doing a different thing, whether it's Ray rebounding 10 times a game as a guard, which is crazy, or, or getting five or six assists a game, and Jared scoring the ball left and right and playing lockdown defense, and Ty just being an incredible defender and, and score for us all year, and then Aiden obviously just does what Aiden does. Because we all played together from younger ages compared to you know other teams, we all built this this chemistry and bond that other teams lacked. In terms of success, couldn't have asked for much more. We all knew, you know, 
where everybody would be on the court. So it was just really easy with Coach Kasher and Phil and Coach Bobon to just implement all these plays because we all knew each other and how we played. This year, every day at practice, just playing together, getting on each other, but never letting it separate us. I think every single starter had like at least two games where they're the leading scorer on the team. And I mean, when you have that, when you just don't have one guy making all the plays, I mean, yeah. it's kind of hard to lose. They put on a show every night and they, they fought. Yeah. There's, there's more. There's something left on the table, obviously, but there's nothing you can do about it at the end of the day. To the CIC, I just say I, I don't think they understand the effect that this decision has had on the senior athletes in the state. I'm very upset by the whole thing. I would ask the CIC to play without fans before they canceled it. I think it could have been avoided. I think there are ways around canceling the whole tournament. Obviously, a couple of days later, we're seeing like how big this impact of the of the COVID-19 really is. So I don't. I guess I don't blame them necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, having your career cut short is just devastating. All we want to do is play. You know, they they played their last game, the Shoreline Final, and they had no idea. That was going to be like their last ever game. You got, really got to notice it was the right decision. To have seen them play without crowds, um, put us on the court, let us play, and uh, you know, tell people they can watch it. And hopefully we can videotape it, send it closed circuit TV kind of thing, and let parents watch and fans watch from home. I think games without fans could have easily happened. Uh, I think that was the most logical way to do this thing. and. I think that's something that could have been done pretty easily with the technology we have. They could have streamed games so parents could still watch and had the games with just the players and the officials, and it seems like that's the best way to do it. But I wish that there was an alternative decision, um, but I understand you know, being cautious about everybody's health is important. But again, I'm biased because I want to see the kids play. I realize that this is you know, a life event that happens once in a while. Uh, but we felt like it could have been handled a little better. Just a rush decision, something that they didn't really take the time to think through, to think of the effects it would have on all the kids that wanted to play in that tournament. I don't want to come off as cocky or, or anything like that, but I think this was our tournament to lose. Like we had it, and, and if we lost this tournament, I would have been surprised. I was very confident going into it. We had a good road to get there. We would have had a couple of tough games, but the way we've been playing, we've been unmatched throughout the whole state, so I thought that this was our chance to bring the first state championship home to Old Lyme and just got taken away from us. Well, I mean, obviously I want to thank all the coaches that helped us out, like starting all the way back from sixth grade. That was like when we got inspired. To the coaches, to my teammates, um, I love you all. Um, thank you so much for, you know, a great four years. Thank you for the season. Thank you to Coach Casher. Thank you to the players for like giving us something to do and actually have a team to support. I'd say just thank you for really, I mean, all the countless work. And how, how many months? Are like three months of just every day except one day off a week. Mm -hmm. Just coming out every day, ready to play, ready to work, and I mean, build up for our goal, which was to win both tournaments. To the coaches and the team at Old Lyme, it's been the best four years of my life playing with you guys and, and playing for you guys. And I'll never forget the memories and the moments that we shared. And I just look forward to coming back next year and years in the future and seeing the success that this group has. Uh, I mean, my, my, my message to the seniors has been and always will be that, um, you know, that hopefully they had a good time their four years here and they can remember the journey more than how, did it, how it ended. Um, that they're lucky enough that the last time they walked off the floor, they walked off the floor as champions, shoreline champions versus state champions, but shoreline champions. That was their last opportunity to win a game and they did. Um, that they'll look back at their four years here and said they had a lot of fun playing basketball. Hopefully they learned a lot, uh, not only about basketball, but about life. And that they've impacted my life in a huge way. And that I've learned a lot about myself through them, that they've taught me some things as well and that it's been a real good growing experience for me um, as much as it has been for them and hopefully they feel the same way and uh, hopefully years from now I'll bump into some of them on the road somewhere and uh, we'll reminisce about this and talk about what a great time we had.